A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Awlul Amri Mink and always a reminder for myself and Abdul Qaraji Sa Da'ifu, Miskeen, Zalim, Jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. That Allah's rahmah and mercy to dress us, bless us and our families and communities. Alhamdulillah that Allah gave us a life in which to see this blessed month of Zulhijjah, the month of Hajj, the month of pilgrimage, completion and the secrets of the holy kawthar. That dressing and blessing like a formula that this is 12 months of journeying into the heart of the Divinely Presence that only Allah come and to describe to us, Muhammadun Rasulullah I'm not on heavens and not on earth but I'm on the heart of my believer and this soul of the believer is the vessel in which contains everything, everything coming into existence and everything not in existence is in Muhammadun Rasulullah And Allah is the power of that reality. Nothing is in Allah nothing is like unto Allah So that this way of marifah, the immensity of this blessing moving into that blessing, then these beads that are strung together teaching us then 12 months of moving into that reality, into that Divine the Presence, into the, the qalb, the qalb, the heart of what Allah means by the Arabic letters what the qaf, lam, ba, what it stands for of an ocean of power through the tongue of truth that pushes its power onto that ba. That that's what's denoted by the heart and that this ocean of power and all of it being located on that ba is then the reality of what's happening on the twelfth month because this is the end of that pilgrimage. That Allah wants us to enter into this bab, into this door, into the reality of that ba and to be dressed by all the, the oceans of the city of knowledge which Prophet described that, I am the city of knowledge and that's not the physicality but that's the soul and the reality of Prophet Then the twelfth month opening the secret of the holy kawthar that Allah is then now describing that if we're at that reality of twelve, we're at the reality of that heart, we're at the reality of that ba. Then Allah want to dress the servant with the kawthar, that that dress, that fountain in which this Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, all of it flowing into the kawthar. Because that's from the secrets of the reality, what is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem? And we have articles on the website that when they showed the huruf from each of these four letters, there are four streams that are flowing into the kawthar and making that reality, making that poem the secret of all realities. And Allah want to dress the servant with that reality in the twelfth month. We pray that Allah dress us from the kawthar, make us to, to drink from it, bathe within it, means to take our soul and immerse the soul within that reality. In the world, in the world of light where there is no form, we're asking from that light to be thrown into that ocean of light from the oceans of kawthar and that Allah dress us from this immense abundance and immense blessings. Because of the immensity of its blessings the tariqah has a mannerism and those mannerisms are what define us and what allows us the movement within the reality and to stay within that reality. It's not what people learn from other schools or esoteric teachings of other places or religious dogma that people think, oh I've been to a masjid all the time so I therefore know how to conduct myself but tariqah completely something different. 
that the, the human nature that people are brought up with now is a very demanding character, a character based and influenced off of social structure, social business structure, uh, academia, the desire to achieve, the desire to, to elevate oneself, promote oneself. And shaitan intentionally teaches and conditions from childhood to adulthood people in this understanding, making it thousand times more difficult to understand and to survive within tariqah. That's the dilemma that everyone's facing. This is the dilemma that, that we are continuously having to reconstruct ourselves to understand that this physical world teaches you to be important, the physical world teaches you to be outspoken, the physical world teaches you to elevate yourself, promote yourself, identify yourself, struggle to get ahead and all of that no problem for your dunya. But the reality of spirituality is you every night have to deconstruct yourself. That's why it becomes so much more difficult that whatever I think I'm doing for my work and dunya because these are the standards of dunya. So you're wearing multiple hats in life, you wear your dunya hat and you do what dunya is requiring you to achieve because yes you, you have to promote yourself, if they don't know who you are you'll stay in the mail room. You have to do those things for dunya because that's the condition in which dunya is operating. But you cannot bring that dunya understanding and say that, I'll also apply that now for my spiritual path. It's a completely different world and it requires a completely different hat. A set. What we mean by hat is a set of an understanding that you put your uniform, you put your kufi, your sunnah clothes, that's a different world. That's a world in which doesn't accept self-promotion, doesn't accept identifying, doesn't accept continuous conflict with what's been proportioned for somebody. It's a continuous process of effacement and that's when we gave the talks on manifestation. Those are the same realities if we talk about seeds, that in life it's a, it's a group of seeds and a nice picture would be a whole bunch of seeds and like little mouths on the seeds and they just keep talking, 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 talking and they think that they have or they are achieving something. And the tariqahs actually come and teach you like a farmer because the shaykh is like a tree coming and teaching the seeds that stop all of that and actually now bury yourself. Means isolate, learn how to stop talking, stop promoting. Stop doing all of these things, stop complaining, stop arguing with tariqah issues, I want to serve this, I don't want to serve that, I want to do this, I don't want to do that. All of those they bury themselves in the soil because people will come with bad character and say, well why are they promoting you? Well because the shaykh is not a seed. The shaykh was like that in his training that was not identified, was not known, was not put in pictures, was never anywhere to be known and he took a life in which to isolate. As a result of that, that person then was ordered into the ground, into seclusions. As a result of being buried within the ground and isolating, the seed had an opportunity to become a tree. Means it comes into what Allah has intended for that individual and Allah never intended for any individual to remain as a seed. This is how Allah's just, right? So then what He… what is He destined for everyone in creation? Burial, death. Because people will say, well oh God, oh God didn't make everybody to be a shaykh. No he did because everyone will taste of death and that's when every seed regardless how much they ran on this earth away from this reality, no matter how much they, they put a crown on themselves, 
they did whatever kind of rubbish they adorned themselves with. In the end Allah opens the earth and throws all the seeds inside and that becomes the great equalizer that everyone will taste of death. Everyone, every seed will be thrown into the dirt and those that achieve their reality, glad tidings for them. Means that those whom in their physical life actually understood their path, understood their reality and they jumped into the ground, they took a life to isolate. I'm going to isolate, I'm going to be a path not known, a person not known. I have to be known by Allah and Prophet I have to make my connection with the shaykhs spiritually. I should not put my desire, my want and my will in anything because when the person is buried you have to copy yourself. Mawlana Shaykh would describe that you must imitate a dead body. Then you know you're doing everything right because that becomes our role model. This is nothing about inflicting self-harm for anybody who I like the term when I say people are crazy because their understanding is so off. This is not inflicting self-harm, these are all spiritual understandings. So when we mimic the dead then you look to yourself and says, well the, the, this dead guy he, he doesn't complain, he doesn't talk, he doesn't say anything and he's just sitting there. Then we know our character is closer to reaching our reality in which we can't complain, we sit and tolerate, we take whatever position is, is been given within the tariqah, whatever role and, ob uh, and obligations are done, we do them to the best of our ability, we try to live a life of service, try to get a life of being recognized by our service that I did here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here and they will identify, they will notice people. As a result of that they mimic the state of death because they're unknown, they're buried and isolated but they're immensely of service, they have a tremendous himmah. And in our lives there was an immense himmah doing many, many things for tariqah but nobody has to know it because it wasn't for anybody, it was not to, to get likes or to be recognized by people but to get the recognition from Prophet because of the khidmat and that was a life of that reality. As a result those seeds became trees and they were nourished, nourished and as a result Allah granted to them, Prophet granted to them and only Allah's madad and support of watering them, they give fruits now. No longer it's a seed, it actually reach its reality and it's a tree deeply rooted that many may come to take that tree down and it's held by Allah's strength. Only Allah can make it to go down but it has fruits. So the images are little seeds everywhere or big seeds like avocado seeds with mouths on them thinking they achieve something. Some seeds also have crowns on them and all sorts of identifying things but they're all seeds, they achieve nothing. And then the tree is the symbol of the shaykh that it was a seed once but it became the reality Allah wanted for it. This is the same wave and particle, they broke down their particle. As a result their wave reality means they reached what Allah wanted for them. I wanted for all my creation to be trees that bear fruits and as a result of your bearing fruits your juzbah brings many people, many people from all over the world to eat from your fruits. And that's why then they teach the good manners. If you're eating from these fruits be thankful, show your courtesy, show your thankfulness, show your respect and admiration for the fruit that you eat it comes with a price. That's why, that's why they keep trying to teach these manners. That you can't just keep coming and eating something, taking from some reality and just hidden and going your way. You're accountable for that type of character and Allah will teach you when you enter into the grave that you are taking from these realities 
but you didn't exhibit the, the khuluq and the character. There's no plagiarism allowed in which people will secretly listen and pretend it's their information and put it out. Allah will hold them responsible. So it means that the khuluq and the character at every degree is now responsible. That's why the tree teaches manners. If you're going to eat from these trees and you enjoyed these fruits, give your respect, show your admiration, show that you understood that you're eating from this tree's fruits. It's not fruits that are available at every tree because you may go to a different tree and it has only like walnuts for you, just a little bit. You may go to another tree and it only has flowers and actually has nothing for you to eat from. Don't assume that every fruit you're eating and every tree you go to will be having fruits for you. As a result when you find a tree like that your life is of service to that tree. Means it's to my benefit to water this tree, to safeguard this tree, to sit under this tree, to eat from the fruits of this tree and begin to plant the seeds of this tree. Right? So this Muhammadan haqqaiq that comes from this tree, this beatific fruit if you enjoy it, plant the seed of it. You're accountable by Allah that you saw this world is burning and you saw this tree is nourishing you, why don't you support this tree? Why do you eat somewhere else? Why do you give credit to something else? So means this khuluq and this character is everything governing from the point of a seed onto how you act under the tree. You're taking from the fruits of this tree, guard it, support it, put your life to make sure, oh this tree is the only tree on this earth for me right now. I'm taking from it my nourishment of my soul and my physicality because a spiritual tree nourishes the inside. Anything from the inside way nourishes, way far beyond our understanding nourishes the physicality. But anything that nourishes only the physicality has no door to the spirituality. Means the inside controls the outside. Anyone teaching you from the physicality has no benefit to the soul. But that which feeds you from your soul it nourishes everything, your eternal soul for your eternal journey and blesses and nourishes the physicality. When we talk like that people then understand, yeah you're right if this was the only tree in my existence and in my life, my source of my entire eternal spirituality that I'm taking from it and I feel the difference of it, my life is to guard that tree to support that tree, to be around that tree. And then more so is that this beatific fruit of this Muhammadan reality that this tree gives to me, I should be planting that seed everywhere. That's what we mean by make a profile, take a video and share it. Don't just take what was good for you and then just leave, that make the world a more beautiful place. Take the barakah and the blessings of what you've been taught and now propagate that teaching. But not by your words contaminated by seeds that never reach the reality, but take from the tree, not from the seeds. So you take from the tree their videos, books and articles, you make your own social profile on Instagram, TikTok and all these other platforms and then keep posting, keep posting, keep posting, keep posting to come against shaitan. And then when you enter into these profiles you see hundreds of profiles of the videos being propagated. Means there's an adab for somebody and a student that my life is to guard that tree and we guard it with our life. People who know of a story when there was a, somebody trying to shoot at the shaykhs, we were running after that person face right into their bullet. And as they were shooting we were running after them because our life was, they're shooting at my shaykhs, no way anyone's going to be harmed on my guard. And I ran towards that 
And we ran towards it and miraculously I had got a new jubba from them. And as the person was firing direct line, it was a hallway with only one, one, <laughs> one person can fit walking and that individual was standing in that hallway firing his gun and I'm running up towards that individual. There was no way for that bullet to miss and I don't know how many he fired off by the time we tried to grab him and other people took him, hit him and took him away. And this was in Damascus, somebody was trying to kill the shaykhs. So it means with their life and their understanding their life is in this. They guard that reality with their life and they've been proven their characters. Allah is looking at everything. You think Allah is looking at only your ability to sit there and listen? Oh look he sat there and he listened, what, what's, the, what's the big deal about that? Allah is guarding on every, He's grading on every, every platform. Then no this person put his life on the line for this understanding. This person put his entire wealth upon the line of this reality. This person put his entire life's time into this reality and then a check mark comes off that this person is sincere. It's not sincere by sitting on a couch because I'm sitting on a couch now talking, <laughs> this is an analogy because I'm sitting on a couch talking but every 4,000 people now are going to watch this video and they're all sitting on couches watching. Sitting on the couch is one accomplishment but what we're trying to describe in this analogy which is very clear is that if you're eating from these fruits Allah's looking to you and saying, so now what? You enjoy that tree, why don't you guard it with your life? Why don't you nourish it and protect it? Why don't you make sure that you safeguard it to show your respect and your love for it? And at the same time why aren't you spreading it? Why don't you take the seed, make a platform, make a, a profile, make whatever you want. You don't want to use your own name, make a different name. Social media accounts can be in thousands, anyone can open hundreds of them. If you're a hacker make a bot that makes 50 accounts, 100 accounts and keeps posting like crazy. Anybody can do because then Allah holds us accountable. So anyone who knows our life we were continuously under this. The, in Los Angeles where we were raised it was all Wahhabi mosques and Mawlana often sent me through that type of testing. He said, take these salawat flyers and these flyers for such and such and I want you to go to that the big, the big, the, those big najdis their, <laughs> their center. I want you to go to their center, go for Jummah, set a table up and start handing these flyers out. That was like a, for them crazy insanity time. So he said, Sami so, what are they going to do, beat me up on the street? I mean the most they can do is beat me up. I went for the Jummah, put the table and put the flyers and one after another death threats that we're going to beat you, we're going to harm you, we're going to do say whatever you want to do but in this country you're going to jail for the rest of your life, take this flyer or get out of here. So it means our life was continuous, why? Because Mawlana was teaching us, you have to show yourself for Allah not harm anyone, we don't ever harm, we never even fought, we never even raised our voice. We brought donuts, he even sent me to a Wahhabi conference and by their, their table and their booth because they had big conferences, 5,000 people, they had a business booth area where all the businesses could buy a booth. He said, secretly buy a booth, don't say what it's going to be on it, we bought the booth. He said, now I want you to go sell salawats. Take your salawats, take your salawat player and sell salawats in the booth. And again we went there, we plugged in the salawats, began to sell salawats and it was like a vampire arising. They were screaming and yelling, running after the table, trying to grab the table to unplug the, the machines. I said, oh don't touch this, this is America, everything's free, I bought this table, you can't touch anything here. They had to call the security, they had to call the police until the police came and said, what are you doing? I said, I bought the booth, these people are crazy. I'm playing and selling Middle Eastern praises. 
And the police didn't understand. So why are they going crazy? So I don't know, you got to ask them. They're supposed to be peaceful people, they claim. Ask them why they're going crazy. So again, we were tested, go sell this, go do that, go do that. So it was never harming anyone because people may hear this and they oh we have to confront people. No, we didn't confront anyone. We played beatific praisings and those Wahhabi people were going crazy from that. But our life was tested. We were tested in what we believed. As a result, we only know one way of teaching, the way that was taught to us. And from what we achieved by that teaching, then this is our purpose in life is to teach a similar understanding. That people have to show to Allah that they believe, that they love, they support, they surround that tree. They, they, they're nourished by that tree, they, their thankfulness before anything else in life, this fruit of reality that you eat, what is the value of that to you? Could you put a comparison onto anything that you have in your home or anything that you have of your property? Is there anything comparable to this one knowledge of a Muhammadan haqqaiq that dresses your soul for all of eternity? Imam Ali said, if one person teaches you one huruf, one letter, one ba, you owe your entire life to that individual. Because the reality of an alim who is teaching haqqaiqs and realities, what, what attachment, what reality the soul is achieving is completely unknown. And instead of that person being ashamed in the grave that they didn't know, it's the responsibility of the shaykhs that teach them, teach them that what they're being taught is of an of a immense reality towards the realities of Prophet And their khuluq and character is not that they just ate it, they ate the realities, but what did they do? What did they achieve? What did they propagate? And that's why their life has to have a khidmat, not just they, they, they sit even if the shaykh is with you or not with you, it makes no difference. There's 5,000, 10,000 that are never around the shaykh and they're busy, they're active, they're propagating, they're doing whatever they can do. Means that this system is, is essential in the understanding of tariqah. One, the character of the seed, that they have good character, they took a life in which to submit, to be planted, they're patient and tolerant. And then the reality of the tree, that when they eat and take from that tree, do they really understand the reality of that fruit? And do they think that that fruit is available everywhere on the street? I'll just go to the next tree, I'll just go to the next tree. Say, no, not this fruit, not these teachings, you can't find them anywhere. And if you can then you should go sit under that tree and you should do the same what's being taught. Pay your respects, live your life to service of that tree and that reality. We pray that Allah grant us an understanding because Muharram comes and it's again a whole new pilgrimage towards that reality. If people are not achieving what they wanted to achieve this is again a reminder that what is it that you're trying to do? If you're trying to get Allah's attention you have to be active on all aspects of tariqah, that you're responsible for what you're taught, you're responsible for the, the uloom and the knowledges that came to you and you're responsible for Prophet that what are you going to do with it? What have you done with it and how loyal are you to it inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. Ma basir Surat Al-Fatiha.